Hello everyone, I'm Ronald Mehta and welcome back to our channel DigiAid.com. We are your digital aid and we provide free courses on the subjects of business and marketing. Let's start with the Porter's Five Force analysis. The Porter's Five Force model is used to evaluate a company's strength in the industry. This business strategy tool aids in the analysis of an industry's attractiveness. The model claims that an organization's competitive position within an environment is determined by five variables or I would say forces, which are industry rivalry, threat of new players, threat of substitutes in the market, bargaining power of buyers and suppliers. Let's look at each one of them briefly, starting with the industry rivalry. The degree of competition among current players in any industry is known as industry rivalry. Due to increased competition, differentiation, price conflict and advertising warfare, it becomes increasingly difficult for businesses to maintain their earnings. The best example in this case could be the industry rivalry between Adidas and Nike in the athletic apparel and footwear industry. Thus, industry rivalry on a scale of low to high is high when the number of competitors is enormous, the industry is expanding, when the exit barriers are high and the firms remain in the market and compete, low prices and scale of economics resulting from larger production due to large fixed cost, and finally, switching costs for consumers are low. Moving on to the next one, threat of new entrants. When a worm's market share is lost, a result of the entry of new players is referred to as the danger of new entrants. The industry's entry and exit hurdles are generally behind this threat. However, when the firms that are performing poorly seek to improve their performance, they face a higher risk. When the profitability and these barriers are low, it becomes simpler for businesses to enter and leave the sector. For instance, Starbucks recently entered the energy drink segment by launching Bio Energy a ready-to-drink beverage, thus going head-on with Red Bull in that segment. The threat of new entrants on a scale of low to high will be high when starting a business in the sector requires very little money, economies of scale, products have low switching cost, there's readily accessible technology behind it, products are not differentiated, the hurdles of entry and exit are significant along with profit margins. Moving on to the next one, threat of substitute products. A threat of substitute products refers to a consumer's ability to readily switch to the opponent's services and goods. When the danger is significant, product price trends must be tracked closely so that revenue isn't harmed. The appeal of the product fades as well. For instance, pizza and burgers are substitute goods. So is Bitcoin for the currency that we have today. The threat is looming. Thus, the threat of substitute good is low to high when there are several alternative products in the market. It is simple for customers to locate services or products that are equally or less expensive than a company's products. And competitor goods are of higher quality than the company's. Moving on to the bargaining power of suppliers. The bargaining power of suppliers is the degree to which suppliers have control over the price of goods. When the suppliers gain command over the items and their pricing, the allure of the market disappears. Being interdependent with numerous vendors and avoiding having a single supplier is one of the greatest methods to avoid this. Walmart is one of the leading suppliers that has a greater bargaining power compared to other suppliers in the market. Thus, suppliers are more focused and well organized, that means the bargaining power is high. The existing products are distinct and are successful. There are fewer options for alternative items in the market and switching costs are substantial. All these four points would lead to greater bargaining power for suppliers. And finally, let's look at the bargaining power of buyers. The extent to which customers have control over lowering prices of items is known as the bargaining power. This situation arises due to many conditions, but the basic one remains to be the presence of a large number of buyers. Differentiated products might aid in reducing buyer bargaining power. Moving on, the bargaining power of buyers is high when multiple vendors offer comparable goods, switching costs are low, Shopping expenditures are low. The product is non-differentiated. Buyers buy in bulk. And finally, a group of buyers looking to acquire a larger quantity of item. So that's it, folks. This brings an end to the topic on Porter's Five Force Analysis. These are the list of sources and links referred to for our content in the video. Thank you and stay tuned for our more videos.